Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this doobacky right here. This is a Gridomatic Laser Edge Grinometer Light, and it is a $70 tool that allows you to measure the exact edge angle of an edge. And why would you want that, I suppose, is perhaps the next question. Well, if you are a person that likes to sharpen knives or for whatever reason need to know the exact angle that you have on an edge or how consistent that angle is, this is a tool that allows you to do it. Subsequently, if you're some Yahoo that talks about them a lot on the internet and have people that may be interested in knowing, given the variety of blades that you see, if they have consistent edges and what those edges happen to be, I fall into that category. So, uh, Side note, if you are interested in seeing that kind of information on future reviews, it would help me to know. So let me know your thoughts on consistency of edge angle, if that plays a factor into if you buy a knife or a sword or not, uh, or if it's just relevant information that you would like to know. Or if it's not and you think it's stupid and sharp is good enough. <laughs> it's all of that information is helpful to know. Uh, anyway. How did I get this? Uh, it is worth noting that Gridomatic sent it over my way for free. Uh, I requested it as a review sample. They obliged, so I did get it for free. If you think that makes me biased, you, you kind of know at the start-ish of the video. Um, but why I asked for it maybe is a more interesting tale. There was a knife reviewer channel out there that said, hey, uh, if you are not measuring edge angle on your knife reviews, and if you are not uh, providing that information to your viewer, you are doing a disservice to them, and you are a poopy knife reviewer. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, given that I, nobody's really asked me. I don't, I'm genuinely, I don't know how many people care, but uh, I, I do think it's useful information. It's certainly information I would like to know just out of, out of curiosity on the swords and knives and things like that that I have. Uh, and as I sharpen kitchen knives and as I sharpen other knives or try to put edge knives back on an edge that have been um, damaged, knowing how well I'm doing is, is I think useful and relevant information and something I, I've been curious about. So, um, I don't know if people find it useful, but I certainly have a curiosity about it. And so I reached out to uh, Gridomatic, requested the sample, they sent it my way. And I can tell you a little bit about the experience of using it. Now, how to use it and exactly how to read it, I'll refer you to their website, which is going to be linked in the description down below. Uh, they have some stuff that tell you how to read a convex edge and how to read primary and secondary bevels. And there's all of that you can kind of uh, understand about how the light is reflecting you know, what you're looking at and, and why it's relevant. So I'll, I'll defer to the website to, to say that information. This isn't a how to use it uh, video, but uh, how was it to use? Uh, well, I, I did find it to be a little bit fiddly. Uh, supposedly there are higher end models here that have some sort of magnet to assist you in keeping the edge in a consistent place. I, I think in retrospect, I, I should have asked for one of those because I do find it hard to keep the knife in a consistently uh, well, in a consistent spot. So I, it kind of wobbles around a little bit and I have to constantly find the center again to, to measure the consistency of edge angles. Uh, that has been a little bit of a problem. And also getting it on camera and using it on larger blades is, is a little bit, of, uh, little bit of a challenge, but I can get there and eventually I, I kind of find my stride and I'm able to measure consistency and the specific angle and read it. Getting it on cameras is still a challenge, but I'm, I'm working on it. Anyway, um, I do find it to be a little fiddly. If there was something that kept the edge straight, I think I think it would make it an easier experience for me to use. Uh, beyond that, in terms of general build quality on the on the piece here, um, I did find that the battery housing in particular is the issue that I had. So um, when I first got this piece, it turned on, it turned off, it did all the things, but the battery cover, I didn't think it was a problem, but I, I could always feel the battery housing moving around a little bit. Uh, I didn't I, I assume that was the normal operation. I didn't know the battery housing was moving around, but then it just kind of came completely undone and stopped working. Uh, now, I did email Gridomatic. I asked them, hey, any suggestions on, on what to do here? I didn't get a response from them before filming this, but at the same time, I bet if you bought one, they would likely replace it. It's not supposed to be loose, <laughs> I would imagine. Uh, but I got sick of waiting, so I took these little screws out. They were required a, a fine screwdriver to get out, uh, took the housing off, and then soldered back on the, the pieces. I used a little bit of solder, but most of the uh, kind of residue solder that was there was, was fine. I'm not particularly good at soldering, and the gun I used is probably wrong, and all sorts of critiques could be made about my ability to solder things. But I, I wanted to try and get it back together so that I could do this video, and I did. And it's in there, and now the battery is stable, and it, it's, it turns on again, so victory. And it <laughs> hasn't started on fire, so second victory. Um, so that was the major problem that I had in the process of taking it apart. I stripped one of the screws. It doesn't fall out, but now there's like a weird little rattle sometimes in this thing. Um, 
that I think is also a bit of a downer. The switch as well in here, it turns on and turns off, but it's like the switch that you would find on a computer mainboard or something. It's not a switch that you would expect to be on a tool or something that feels like is, is gonna last very long. It feels also on the fragile side. So I have to be a little gingerly with it and it does give me some some pause in, in saying that this is gonna be a really dur durable tool, which is kind of my expectation for $70. Getting something that seems like a 3D printed you know, very basic thing with a, you know, $5 laser pointer in it for $70 doesn't, doesn't seem like a great value. On the flip side, this is a pretty obscure tool. And uh, I, in, in looking around, $70 is not necessarily <laughs> a bad price for, for having one and that they are accessible at, uh, at that price is, I suppose, I suppose what you get. Um, small batches, mean generally higher prices for some of these these obscure tools anyway the, the point is i don't know how many i'm not an expert on grinometers but it does seem that the laser edge measuring ones uh, it there's not a lot of cheap options uh, that said given that there are higher end versions available there's a pro one it's a little bit more i, I would say if you're in it already I, i'd probably lean towards trying a different pro model or something like that in retrospect i kind of wish i had ordered one of those or asked for one of them uh, because some magnetic assistance to keep the the edge in would be appreciated um, i don't know as well if there are options for with more than a two inch uh, uh a, a two inch opening here not that that's a huge problem swords most of the katana and things like that that i measured i didn't have a problem with other than it being fiddly, uh, most long swords and stuff like that were fine. But there were some kitchen knives that were too big to fit in. There were some swords like a Type 18C that are, are too big. Uh, Compilon, I didn't have any luck getting getting it in because they're wider than two inches at the top. So there are some limitations that I ran into in terms of having the ability to, to measure the swords and things that I liked. But for the items that fit in, they were fine and I could, I could measure them. Katana, which I tend to do a lot of, were there. Um, so that is is some of the experience in using it. it it's made of uh, a plastic and there's a circuit board in it. I've dropped it a few times as well. It held together. The only problem I really had was that the battery housing came undone and then I expanded the problems, I guess, from there. Beyond that, it, it seems to be a pretty durable, uh, durable little tool. Uh, other at, kind of notes from using it, if there's a burr on my knife because I, I kind of touch the plastic housing to the edge, I kind of feel some problems or nicks or chips or things like that in the edge as well, which I found to be helpful. Uh, I also found in using this that I really suck at sharpening. So if I measure kitchen knives or factory edges, at least on the knives that I have that still have factory edges, very often they're pretty consistent. And I was surprised by that, that there wasn't a lot of variety or uh, huge issues with with most of the factory edge knives that I've that I've, I've looked at. Uh, some of the swords, in fact, most of the swords that I, I looked at were also relatively consistent. Um, there were some windless ones that bounced around quite a bit, but in a lot of cases, the edges were relatively consistent on a number of the katana and a number of the long swords that I looked at with their factory edges. I found that to be somewhat surprising, and I also found it surprising how bad I am at consistency and sharpening. So the edges that I put on, uh, I'll have one side that's 15 degrees and kind of meanders around between 15 and 20, and then the other side is 25 to 35 degrees, and it's or not. I don't know if it's 35 degrees, but it goes from 25 to off the chart here. <laughs> so uh, my 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 sharpening is poopy, and uh, this tool will allow me to be better at it, to measure the results I'm getting and to adjust my technique if I put that much effort into it. But at least know that I'm doing it not well and uh, this will be a tool that I can use to measure progress. So I do find it to be a useful thing. Um, would I recommend it though? Well, for $70, like I said, it doesn't, if you get one, don't expect remarkable build quality or a finely made steel piece of craftsmanship or something. It's a pretty simple thing, but I do find it to be useful. If you are, if you are curious about your edge angle or curious about consistency on edge angles um, or want to measure it and have that data for yourself, then this seems to be an effective and reasonably cost-effective way to do it given at least some of the other options that I've seen out there, which it doesn't seem to be a common tool. So there's there's not a whole lot. Um, but I don't know that every, I would recommend it to everyone, right? <laughs> uh, one, as a review guy talking about this stuff on the internet, nobody's really ever asked me about consistency of edge angle. I get some odd requests to measure this aspect or that aspect of the edge, but what is the precise angle and is it maintained is, hasn't really been a question that I've gotten. Um, so 
I, I don't know if, if it is a thing that a lot of people care about, and so it's tough for me to say that I would recommend one to everyone. Uh, that said, if you're talking about them on the internet, if you're a person as well that sharpens and wants to know the results, I can certainly see why it's a beneficial thing to have. Uh, this one in particular had some struggles. I would, I would probably, I'm honestly more curious about the pro models or something that allows me to use a magnet assisted thing to, to hold it a little bit more steady and get cleaner, quicker results. Um, but this, this does the job for 70 bucks. Um, anyway, I don't know if that entirely answers the question because the answer is a kind of, it's not a bad tool. It's on the lower end cost side of things, but it's still a lot for, you know, what a little, a little plastic doodad, right? Um, at least in my brain, it seems, it seems that way. Uh, but it did give me some answers and it is a helpful tool and I'm grateful that I have one now. Uh, I think for me personally, I would get one because I'm very interested in swords and knives and I sharpen things and I try and, and having the ability to measure those things now is a useful tool for me. So if you are similarly interested to me, it may behoove you to, to pick something like this up in the not too distant future. But I, I might encourage you to take, uh, you know, swing, go for broke and, and buy one with a magnet assisted or, you know, one of the pro models if they're easier to use. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, thanks again to Grinomatic for sending this my way for review. Hopefully it's been an interesting video. That's all I've got. Cheers, and thanks for watching.